So let's talk about PTSD. It's not something that develops on its own, and it's not something that just comes out of the blue. It's something that happens after a traumatic event. And most people, after a traumatic event, develop a lot of the same symptoms that a person would with PTSD. But then something gets in the way of... I mean, it's like no matter what I do, nothing's ever good enough for you. What do you mean, whatever you do? You don't do anything. You completely ignore me, you completely ignore Kay, you get up in the morning and go to work without a word. I'm the one who gets her up, gets her dressed, gets her to school, picks her up from school, feeds her dinner, gives her a bath, and I'm the I one who puts it. her to bed at night. Where are you in this picture exactly? I mean, most people when they have something bad happen to them, they can take time off, don't be with family. But for us, it's like we can't let ourselves flip that switch. You have to stay numb to it or you can't do your job. That's exactly right, Jason. You know, there's three things that keep people from recovering who have PTSD. And two of them are numbing and avoiding. Let's start with numbing. Basically, you are pulling the plug on your emotions because during the trauma, you didn't have time to feel your feelings and make sense out of them. You just had to disconnect and drive on. I just think, I just think that if we schedule a time to do it and that time comes and he doesn't want to do it, I don't know how I'm supposed to say you have to without him blowing up at I'm not going to blow up at you. If we pick a time and day, I'll do it. I'll go through with it. Okay. We took the hill without a fight, no problem. And I thought everything was going to be okay. But once we got up to the top, we realized why there wasn't any resistance. The entire hill was littered with butterflies, uh, anti-personnel mines, and they were all around us. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, I don't remember ever being so scared. Not just for me, but for my men. I led them up there, you know. It was my job to make sure they were safe. Jones was the first to get hit. He was our minesweeper, and I sent him out, and I saw him get hit, and he was screaming for help, and we couldn't, I couldn't. There were mines everywhere, so I ordered my men to stay put. Nobody helped him, but uh, I should have helped him. You know, that's what you're supposed to do, what you're trained to, but I couldn't. All I did was just stand there and watch him bleed out. It felt like time stopped. It took so long. You might think about this as a treatment for PTSD that happens to be delivered in a couple or conjoint format. It has two primary goals. The first is to improve PTSD symptoms and the common comorbidities that go along with PTSD, like depression, anger, guilt, etc., as well as to enhance the relationship functioning of the dyad. Well, it sounds like the mission was actually a success, even though a man died and another lost his legs, and that Jason probably kept more men from dying by listening to himself and following protocol. What do you think about that, Jason? Well, it feels really good to hear her say that. I mean, not just because she thinks I did everything I could, but just hearing the whole thing from somebody else, it really helps me to think about it. I think we should. We should talk about it, about Jones and Hernandez. I think it'll help me see the bigger picture. I mean, everything that was going on that day was just so crazy, but now I see we did everything that we could. Well, I'll tell you what, I think that you guys have learned that partners can really help each other see the big picture when it comes to traumatic events.